I'm Vadim, uh, Vadim Todorov, uh, tech lead at Assembla. Uh, maybe you've heard about Assembla already. Um, basically, uh, we take uh, care about the uh, project management. So you can figure it out downstairs. Uh, we are going to talk today uh, about the uh, Ruby specific architecture for long term projects. Uh, basically, I would uh, announce from start that it's um, at some point of uh, experience, it doesn't matter if it's Ruby or it's C or it's Go or, it's or whatever, it actually goes directly to some uh, certain cases. So let's let's start. Okay. Uh, that's something about. Uh, I think uh, mostly of you are coders, so uh, that's probably uh, things like uh, happen in uh, perfect coders world, world uh, like uh, everyone's dreaming about, like. Uh, everyone wants to see, but uh, it's most likely never happens. So, uh, main problems we have as uh, programmers, uh, main problems we have, uh, we, we face uh, during our de development is uh, basically struggling with uh, business requirements, uh, we have deadlines, we have sort of bugs, which we do by our own, but still. Uh, we have human factor issues. Uh, you can be tired, you can be ill, whatever. And uh, from time to time, we have more and more technical debt. Uh, so basically, to be able to do something, uh, something more reliable, uh, some more interesting product, more stable product, uh, flexible and uh, being able to maintain it. Uh, and at the same time, uh, being able to uh, deal with the business, uh, we have to think of some uh, way to befriend uh, uh, our end, and the business end. So, is there a way uh, to do it? Actually, there is a way to befriend a business with the code as the core code. It's uh, solid and DDD practices. Uh, solid is the, maybe you've heard about it, it's a lot uh, of uh, hustle around the last days. But it is, it's actually quite um, old, quite an old uh, doctrine. Uh, I will explain what each of those letters means. So, uh, as it's uh, single responsibility principle, uh, which means that uh, some some class, some uh, model, some some object. Uh, could only be responsible for its own uh, needs, so it it won't be general. It, it's strictly dedicated for some uh, exact stuff. Oh, it's open closed, uh, which means that it's open for uh, extension, but closed for modification. Um, that's a bit um, <laughs> uh, contradictory. Uh, notation. So, uh, what it's uh, actually mean is that uh, software, uh, some software items, uh, could only be um, created once, and then you don't uh, ch don't ever change the thing. So it's uh, only subclasses or uh, some inheritance used. Uh, L uh, is uh, list of substitution, uh, which means that uh, any, any class, any object 
could be replaced by its ancestors uh, without affecting the program logic. Uh, I is uh, interface segregation, uh, which means that not relying on uh, any exact object, but rely on interfaces instead. And uh, D is uh, depend dependency inversion. So uh, I will explain it a bit uh, wider uh, later on. So uh, what is about uh, domain driven development is uh, the way to show uh, the code itself uh, to from up to bottom. Uh, it means that uh, business uh, guys will see the same stuff, the same uh, domains as the code guys. So it, it will be cleaner, it will be more uh, specific, uh, and uh, it will allow to understand each other better. Um, so here, uh, here we have the benefits uh, for the business, first of all, because uh, basically everyone, uh, every project is firstly dedicated to some business. So it's quite expected that we have to, we have to friend with, we have to be friend uh, with business somehow. So uh, being solid plus DDD, uh, means that, uh, as I said, business and developers are at the same level of uh, understanding. Uh, both teams, both uh, parts of the struggling uh, have uh, the same mm, domain, the same vision of the product. And uh, basically that helps much to understand each other. Uh, mostly, uh, Actually, uh, the the whole stack, the whole uh, list of my projects, uh, everywhere I've been working on, um, it was always like, you know, let's let's do it fast. Let's let's search for the most easy solution and uh, implement it. Uh, let's let's do it. Maybe not so elegant right now, but we'll fix it later. So that's that's the business. That's nothing to do with that, so I can basically understand it, but um, it's quite rare times uh, happens when uh, you really uh, go back and refactor that. So that's always not much time. It's deadlines, it's, it's all over the, uh, the place, I think. So uh, using solid principles uh, allows uh, us as coders to perform the way business wants, like fast releases, like uh, doing this as we do, but we'll think about it later. Why am I saying that? Um, uh, basically, uh, if you get uh, structured, uh, decoupled the whole uh, code base, mm, well, uh, it uh, allows you to um, introduce some muddy code, some, some fast code, some, something that uh, has, has to be probably even thrown away at some point. Uh, but it uh, gets you easier, it allows you easier to uh, perform such, such a trouble in the future because uh, you will be able to Uh, to s substitute that particular object if you uh, use solid. Uh, mostly, mostly, uh, for for business and for coders, what is the obstacle? What is the the scope? Uh, when you get the uh, main product. Uh, you think of uh, how to code it, how to uh, develop it. Um, first of all, you of course need to, to think of target. 
but um, over over time uh, it it gets uh, more and more features and it gets more and more code and uh, one, uh, if you don't think of uh, maintainability uh, you will get at some point you will get just stuck with some feature uh, which could not be added or which uh, breaks another feature or it uh, affects some other code it, uh, you you get some regressions there so on and so on so uh, for business is as well uh, a benefit to write a better code uh, yep so we hear about Ruby to talk about Ruby. Uh, so let's let's see what's what specific has Ruby here. I actually love Ruby. Um, first time I started to learn Ruby, it was uh, I actually heard of it uh, because of some uh, magic, some monkey patching, or mm, basically it was uh, the sort of. Uh, sort of inspiration for me. So the magic which uh, turned me to Ruby actually is uh, not so good to use as I realized over time. Um, those pitfalls are basically the main thing, I think, main, uh, main obstacles people face and try to do, try to implement, try to use uh, in their normal Ruby life, which uh, after all leads to some very bad endings. So those magic, uh, those monkey patching, those uh, inheritance with includes and uh, extends, uh, those class variables, that's most evil, I think. Well, after the magic, probably. Um, those uh, duck typing are sometimes uh, leading to some very bad points, very bad code, and uh, quite, quite hard uh, and time-consuming uh, fixes. Uh, in my experience I had a, I had a case uh, when we've been working on uh, stuff uh, that was a small project and uh, and it was actually not on Ruby but it was on JavaScript but no matter uh, it's sort of close because of uh, again monkey patching and magic uh, possibilities so at some point uh, guys who was working on uh, but that was uh, CO. Well, you probably heard about CO, service oriented. Um, that was CO product. And uh, uh, one of those uh, services, uh, which was built on JavaScript, uh, at some point we just stuck, uh, those guys just stuck uh, with the feature uh, addition because they couldn't uh, clearly understand it's uh, their own code. So that's why I'm saying that we should avoid using Ruby because Ruby is a wonderful language. I really love it. Uh, you can write uh, DSLs with that with, uh, I don't know, it's the most powerful DSLs I've ever seen. Uh, but uh, again, avoid magic. So, I will show you some examples why it's actually mm, have to be mm, like this, like what I say. Uh, at some point, uh, we had uh, in another project on Ruby, we had the place of uh, magic. It was a model that was uh, included in another class. So um, uh, that was a small team dedicated to the feature. Uh, we developed it and we introduced that uh, magical 
extending, so on, monkey patching, uh, because it was a Rails project, and we have to uh, trick a bit with Rails. Of course, you've heard about Rails, since Ruby is mostly Rails <laughs> these days. Uh, and uh, at some point, we just realized that uh, other guys who work with us, who was working on the same project, but uh, was not, uh, uh, it was actually a big project, uh, but was not uh, really involved into that particular development and, and not aware of the stuff we produced there. Um, they particularly break the logic of our internal uh, uh, domain. So uh, that's actually was hurting us a lot because uh, a lot of regressions and new customers coming to the new future, uh, it was actually harmful. And then we decided just to remove that, ma that magic that, that was, uh, I think, the breaking moment when I realized that magic is very, very bad. Um, so you can take a look at the example. Basically, the uh, simple ra rails, that's actually rails uh, method uh, default scope for the model. Uh, it says active record model, uh, active record base, but now it's for rails uh, five, it's uh, active model. So. Uh, that's actually not doesn't matter, but uh, default scope uh, right now it's deprecated and it's um, a bad practice to use it as it says. But still, uh, if you get it and if you have some model and if you extend it with uh, another model, I mean the model, module, and the model, so uh, default scope won't work, won't work proper properly at all. So that could uh, break some some stuff. You 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 don't you may not even expect uh, such a such a break because uh, well, of course we usually write tests, but uh, we're not God, so we can't uh, expect everything from that. So uh, breaks on variables. That's yeah. That's uh, actually the. I think the most uh, bad, worst uh, part is using uh, class variables because it's actually, first of all, it's not trade safe. So if you, well, that's okay if you have the Rails program, that's fine, Rails is single threaded and uh, you, you don't have any issues. But for some diamond, let's say, or I don't know, smaller programs, uh, which is supposed to work multi-threaded, uh, that could uh, actually cause a lot of issues. Mm. That's uh, that example. I've uh, I don't remember. I found it somewhere over the internet. Oh, no, not not this one. I think next one. Uh, yeah, uh, this uh, part which uh, shows uh, the uh, bad usage of variables itself uh, as well. So uh, we have some uh, sort of queue here. Uh, you probably heard about uh, queues. That's all over the place nowadays. Uh, so that's a loop. Uh, and uh, basically the problem is uh, particularly here in this la sorry in this uh, uh, lazy load because once uh, over loop once this uh, particular variable is being set it will remain the same all over the uh, loop so it will affect the basic logic uh, using oh this example, I found it over the internet. I think it was uh, Stack Overflow or something else. No matter. Uh, if you pay attention, this uh, uh, variable 
is not even class variable, but it's being used as class variable, so it's even better. That's the power of magic Ruby provides us, uh, but at the same time, uh, it sh you should be very careful, very uh, pay m very much attention to to the stuff you do because it could lead to some very unpleasant uh, results sometimes. Um, return value. Of course, Ruby is a mon uh, is a duck typing language. All over the place is duck typing. If it says like a duck, it's a duck. But sometimes it gets too far and you basically have uh, some unexpected data because you can respond from method anything you want, uh, any type you want, uh, and that, that actually could, from time to time, when you change, uh, over time, it, it gets changed anyway. Uh, when you change uh, some methods, mm, you get quite unexpected results for the responses. So that's, that should be actually, mm, even JavaScript guys who has the same problem as well. Uh, actually, uh, Ruby and JavaScript are pretty close uh, to, to the concepts. So uh, basically, even JavaScript guys uh, invented uh, TypeScript for some reason, uh, because I think they actually get tired <laughs> of the stuff they can't control this own program. So actually I was talking about a lot of depression here. Mm. Uh, probably all of you heard Murphy's, Murphy's Law, so basically if anything go wrong that uh, can go wrong will go wrong. So what, what what to do with that? How can we uh, avoid human factor, actually? Uh, as I said, uh, it's way much uh, e easier to work with uh, some, some strict, strict rules, strict uh, positions. So it uh, makes sense to use static code analyzers. Mm, for Ruby, it's most popular is Rubocop. Use framework level uh, restrictions uh, to avoid problematic code. So it's some uh, documentation, it's some uh, strict uh, interfaces, uh, some strict type responses, and so on. And of course, anything you write should be, must be covered with tests. Because basically, tests helps us. I had a case, uh, my former, it was to 2004, far away ago. Uh, we had a project and uh, our uh, business lead, actually it, uh, mostly was business. Uh, so he told us that we can do whatever we want. The, the, the main case is, well, there will be a QA, of course, but the main case is that the program is working. So that's, that's the goal, that's, that's it. And I insisted on the test coverage. Other guys were not so inspired in that. Uh, so I basically just took uh, one and uh, tried to explain him some on, on some examples. So uh, we just took, it was MVC at that point, uh, particular application, not, not uh, Rails, it was not Rails yet. Uh, so we took that uh, controller and I advised him just to to write the code. It was something simple like login. Or I, I won't say you better. Um, but uh, I asked him to, to write some tests for that. Well, okay, he started too. And uh, of course, it was actually own uh, written uh, based on some uh, testing framework, but it's it was own written uh, test uh, test set. 
So, <laughs> when we started to write those tests, um, uh, well, of course, it, it failed at once. So, it's, he says, hey, dude, your tests are not working. I said, wait a minute, let's see a bit deeper. And we started to dig it, well, it's a couple of minutes, and realized that the code is not working. So, what I said is that you just started to write tests, you just uh, spent about five minutes here, and you already found a bug. So that inspired him to, and uh, till now he he writes the, he covers his code with tests as well. So that's uh, writing tests is a quite important factor for the code. Uh, yeah, that's that's the point. Actually, uh, I was talking that you should, you must, you have to lead some particular way, but it's actually no boundaries here. And that's why I love Ruby most, most of all. Um, I will show you an example. Uh, that's, uh, uh, actually designers will solve this uh, task better. Um, you have to uh, tie these four points with uh, three straight lines. Mm, we'll not try to, so that's how it looks like. Uh, what I mean here is that there is no borders to, to, to use in your work. Uh, if that fits better, if, that, if you feel that looks better, if you feel that might uh, save your day, that's fine to work. So, uh, basically, that this is why uh, Ruby or Go language or JavaScript nowadays are so popular uh, for uh, business because we have flexible tool to work with, and it's quite mm, quite easy to move on with. So. That's, that's the point. Uh, functional programming, why I'm saying about functional programming, I saw some guys uh, uh, from a particular Ruby project, they were actually using Rails, uh, hold on, I will show you. Uh, they were using Rails, uh, but at some point they realized that uh, it's very hard to introduce any change in the project, in the, pro in the product. And it's hard to, to maintain its reliability. It's hard to, to, to follow this project and so on. So uh, at some point, they just uh, switched to some functional way. Wait, it, it works for them, and they feel fine. Why not? Uh, that's, that's the, as I said, the, the interesting mm, part about Ruby. Um, so about those uh, methods, that bad code. Mm. As you can see, uh, we are here only for the strict type. So it's way much better, when, way much easier, easier to follow uh, what this particular method uh, responds, and uh, it's easier to maintain it as well. And the functional way, as you can see, it's of course it's not functional because Ruby every everything in Ruby is an object. So, but it's more or less uh, close to, and uh, you get the benefits, whatever you need. Uh, so yeah, let's 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 see what exactly about solid Ruby we can do here. Uh, uh, yeah. The rails, 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 rails. Uh, actually, uh, last uh, two, one, three Ruby has uh, some methods even from rails. Well, it's not so bad, maybe, mm, but the way we go with rails is not so good as well, because basically rails forces us to, uh, first of all, it uses magic. It uses unclear flow. Uh, 
and um, one of the most fails with the rails is that it uh, forces us to bind our code together without dividing into domains. So our models, our controllers are the mess, actually. That, that's, the, that's the mess. Uh, it's a shame to say it, but it's a mess. It's all over the places. I've never seen uh, the Rails uh, pro product, the Rails project, where it's a clear and the straight flow that it could be understood right away just looking at it. So basically, that's that's the sad part. But um, what could be done? What could be done? That, well, that's it. And even one one more uh, uh, bad point that it uh, I mean the rails itself uses exceptions to control flows, which is not so good as well. After all, uh, so this small piece of code uh, just shows us the whole mess happening around because basically that's um, mixing everything into a single place. And you have to, to smash your uh, business logic, the domain itself, over the whole application. So that's quite unpleasant. What can we do with that? What what could be done here? Uh, as I said, no type coercions. Uh, respond with those objects. If that's array, you can return an array. If that's uh, uh, some sort of uh, string, you you respond with a string, or or it's empty string, or a string. So that's that's it. Uh, even even going with Rails. Uh, you can split. Uh, I've heard actually uh, from some people that it's a, an anti-pattern, uh, like doing your placing some stuff at business uh, folder or leap for folder or whatever. Uh, they say uh, that models are classes, so let's let's do those uh, other classes uh, to to live with the with the models cause basically that's that's the same but but that's not the same actually uh, wrapping up external leaps it uh, also makes some sense because basically uh, at my practices we have we faced a lot of failures when we just probably can't update external library uh, just uh, just because the uh, uh, API changed it so um, we have to switch it or change it for other library uh, so it makes sense to wrap it with uh, some classes for easier life say so and yeah never forget about us uh what's about solid here uh what's about solid so we have to just split our big it's usually a big as over time it gets bigger and bigger uh, to smaller pieces uh which is uh, e each of the piece uh, each piece is uh, tightly focused on its own domain its own functionality and definitely loosely coupled uh, that's why actually so I think so uh, much was uh, hassle around uh, SOA because it's loose coupling and domain understand uh, business understands that uh, developers understand that and uh, but I think it's it was too much application for that I mean the products were uh, had uh, which had to be um, monolithic uh, uh, we are trying to to, to be built uh, so I and that that failed <laughs> actually I saw so that those fail so uh, let's see something uh, oh so here uh, and yeah by the way start with planning 
uh, uh, solves sometimes a lot of problems ahead because uh, when you just start discussing and uh, uh, describing the problem, the, the stuff you're going to work on, it actually helps you to understand it better, even if you think it's already done and you already understand it. Um, so uh, let's 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 try to to do something with that code. Actually, it's about code. It's all about code. Um, so yeah, uh, what if uh, our code looks like that? And that's it. That's never changed. Uh, everything you do with Rails is done. So basically, you have your templates. It's a framework to render templates. So that's it. Uh, what's what's inside? Uh, mostly, I just moved to the controller part here, so uh, probably it's not so much better as it could be. Still, it's Rails because it Rails have uh, forces us to bound all those parts together, um, but. At the same point, uh, you can actually control all of these items, all of these entities, uh, way much better. Uh, let's look a bit deeper. It's quite simple entity. So that's um, the pattern, pattern being used here and in, over the solid actually as well, uh, is read and write models. Uh, we have uh, not uh, immutable items, immutable uh, representations, which are clear to understand and clear to maintain. Uh, this part is the read model. It it have it has nothing actually in it. It it only has the business logic. So if that's user, it has some fields, and it has some actions methods. That's it. There is no chain with the database because it could be different. It could differ from database. It shouldn't be uh, actually um, be uh, the same as database representation. It, it's not a convention. Uh, what about writing models? Uh, basically, it calls repositories. Uh, that's from DDD. Uh, the notation repositories is from DDD. Um, that part is only occupied by writing data. So it takes your some uh, data, some uh, set, some whatever. It, it, it's a, it could be a string, an array, and an object, a hash, whatever. And it just passes it to the, to the database properly. So that's it. That's that's the, the the layer which occupies with the proper mm, passing data to the database. This is uh, more detail, um, uh, more detailed description of those repositories. How it looks like. Uh, repository is not OR, OR, ORM. It's not ORM. It's uh, Another layer which takes ORM in its uh, manipul and manipulates with it to just pass data properly. So it's the business logic as well. Uh, to be able to understand, uh, I was uh, writing a, actually a, a project. Uh, it was not. Uh, it's uh, right now. It's Hanami. Uh, Hanami is the sort of framework which trying to provide uh, the same uh, s functionality, the same stuff which Rails does, mm, but uh, does it a bit different way. So it tries to use those decomposition, uh, those um, solid practices, and uh, if you take a look, basically that's the same, it's already grown up Hanami, so uh, that's basically the same controller, mostly. But as you can see, it only have a single method call, and that's it. 
So it's, it's a pure code. It's not a mix of responses, results, and so on and so on. It's, it's a pure code, and it operates with object. So uh, that, will actually, that actually helps way much better mm, to maintain it over time. Uh, and these are tools uh, which can help us help you to build some some solid from scratch, like redoing something old or mm, doing something new. So that's it. <laughs>